Hello everyone. Let's learn today general features and attachments of the ulna. Now we know ulna is a medial bone of the forearm and it is homologous with the fibula of the leg and it is also considered as post axial bone of the forearm. Now as you know ulna is a typical long bone so it has got two ends upper end and lower end and intervening shaft with three borders and three surfaces. Now let's discuss about upper end. The upper end is expanded and it is hook like. The hook is called a and lateral to that there is a notch that is termed as radial notch. Now in addition to that the upper end has got two processes you can see over here. The superior one is the olecranon process and the anterior one is the coronoid process. Together these two they form trochlear notch. Now let's discuss first the olecranon process. It has got beak like summit and this point is remaining in the olecranon fossa of the humerus during full extension. Let me show you. So this is humerus, this is its lower end and posteriorly this one is the olecranon fossa. So when we join these two together, this is trochlea. So that will be lodged in the trochlear notch and when we perform full extension over here you can see that point or that summit will be lodged inside olecranon fossa like this. Okay. Now let's discuss about the external features of the olecranon process. It has got five surfaces superior, anterior which is articular, medial, lateral and posterior. Let's talk about superior surface first. The superior surface at its junction with the anterior surface here it provides attachment to the articular capsule of elbow joint and next to that there is a rough area and this rough area receives insertion of triceps brachii. Between triceps brachii and the joint capsule there runs a bursa. Now at its junction with the posterior surface over here, this olecranon process forms a tip of the elbow. Now this tip of the elbow has got a clinical significance. Let me show you the humerus again. So this is the olecranon fossa and if we join these two together, now with full extension of the elbow, the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle and this tip of the elbow. These three are remaining in a straight line. You can clearly make out. And when we perform full flexion like this. Again, during full flexion, these three structures, medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle and tip will form isosceles triangle. Now during fracture or dislocation of the olecranon process this relation is disturbed. So that is a clinical significance. Now let's see the posterior surface. It is smooth and it is forming below a triangle. You can see over here. And beyond that point from the apex of the triangle the posterior border starts. So this is smooth and it is related to the skin and fascia directly in between the skin and fascia and this surface there runs a bursa and inflammation of that bursa is called as student's elbow. Now let's see anterior surface of the olecranon process over here you can see it is smooth and it is articular and it is forming upper half of the trochlear notch over here and this will be articulating with the trochlea of the humerus let me show you this is the trochlea this is its medial flange this is lateral flange so this trochlear notch will be in relation with the trochlea now if you closely observe the anterior surface you will see two vertical ridges one and this over here will be second now these two vertical ridges will divide this articular surface into three areas the medial area, intermediate area and the lateral small area. Now out of these three, the medial area and the intermediate area 
will come in contact with the trochlea during various movements of the elbow whereas this lateral most small area will come in contact with the trochlea only during extension now let's see the medial surface the medial surface is continuous with the corresponding surfaces of coronoid process and the shaft the medial surface it is providing attachment to the highest fibers of flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus as well as it provides attachment to the posterior and oblique band of ulnar collateral ligament of the elbow joint let me show you a diagram now in this diagram you can see this is lower end of humerus this is medial epicondyle this is coronoid process this is olecranon process and in between this there runs a triangular shaped ulnar collateral ligament of the elbow joint now it has got anterior band posterior band and an oblique band so what we were discuss is the medial surface of olecranon process it provides attachment to the posterior band and oblique band of ulnar collateral ligament now let's see the lateral surface of the olecranon process it is continuous with the posterior surface of the shaft and it provides insertion to enconius muscle now let's discuss about coronoid process of the ulna it has got four surfaces superior anterior medial and lateral surface the superior surface it is smooth it is articular and it is forming lower half of the trochlear notch if you closely observe the superior surface you can see there is a ridge and that divides the articular surface into medial and lateral part both the parts will remain in contact with the trochlea now let's see the anterior surface in the lower part it is rough and the rough area is called as ulnar debrosity the ulnar debrosity plus remaining anterior surface it receives insertion of brachialis muscle now in the lower and lateral part of the ulnar debrosity this portion provides attachment to oblique cord now the oblique cord extends from ulnar debrosity to the radial debrosity let me show you this is head neck and this is radial debrosity if we connect both like this so between the tuberosity there is attachment of oblique cord which represents the remnant of tendon of flexor pollicis longus now the medial margin of the anterior surface over here it represents a tubercle or it shows a tubercle this tubercle is termed as sublime tubercle and it provides attachment to sublimus muscle now sublimus is a synonym of flexor digitorum superficialis so its humero ulnar head is attached to the sublime tubercle in addition to that this sublime tubercle will also provide attachment to ulnar head of pronator teres and sometimes occasional head of flexor pollicis longus so three muscles are attached to it and in addition to it the portion of ulnar collateral ligament its anterior band and oblique band is also attached to it let me show you in diagram again see this in diagram this is coronoid process this is its anterior surface forming ulnar tuberosity and over here along its medial margin there is sublime tubercle which receives attachment of anterior band and oblique band of ulnar collateral ligament so there are five attachments on the sublime tubercle now the medial surface of the coronoid process is continuous with the medial surface of the olecranon process and this provides attachment to flexor digitorum profundus now let's see lateral surface of the coronoid process it is continuous with a notch this is termed as radial notch just because it lodges head of the radius let me show you so uh, this is circular head of the radius which is disc like and this portion of the radius head of the radius will come in contact with the radial notch of the ulna over here you can see and together they form part of the articulation of superior radial ulnar joint over here you can see so this portion forms part of the articular surface 
and remaining articular surface is completed by a ligament that is termed as annular ligament like this so a complete socket is formed within that socket or within that osseofibrous ring osseofibrous ring means it is partly made up of bone and partly by the fibrous tissue that is ligament so osseofibrous ring forms a socket and within that socket the head of the radius will rotate like this and together they form superior radial nerve joint now next to the radial nerve there is a depression which lodges radial tuberosity you can see over here so as the supination and pronation movement can be performed and the margins of radial notch anterior and posterior margins will provide attachment to annular ligament now below that depressed portion over here you can see there is an elevated area along the lateral surface this elevated area is called as supinator crest which is providing attachment to deep fibers of the supinator and the supinator crest below is continuous with order of ulna okay so in the lateral surface of the coronoid process we see the radial notch a depressed area and supinator crest now let's discuss about shaft of the ulna as you know ulna is a typical long bone so it has got three borders and three surfaces namely anterior lateral and posterior border and in between them anterior medial and posterior surface so let's discuss first the borders the anterior border commences from the lower part of ulna tuberosity this is ulna tuberosity and beyond that there starts anterior border which is rounded which is thick and it is ill defined in the lower part so this is anterior border lateral to that the sharpest one is the lateral border or the interosseous border as it provides attachment to interosseous membrane it is termed as interosseous border so interosseous border of the ulna and interosseous border of the radius will be facing towards each other like this and together they provide attachment to interosseous membrane in upper part over here we have discussed there is attachment of the oblique cord between the ulna tuberosity and radial tuberosity so in upper part in this region let me connect both so here will be oblique cord and in between radius and ulna will be interosseous membrane so in upper part there is a gap between interosseous membrane and oblique cord this gap is providing passage for the posterior interosseous vessels now let's discuss posterior border of the ulna as you know the posterior surface of the olecranon process bears a triangular impression and beyond the apex of that triangle a sinusly curved you can see over here border starts that is the posterior border which is clearly defined and it reaches towards the root of the styloid process of ulna this is styloid process of ulna this is head at the lower end so from the apex of that triangle a sinusly curved border runs down towards root of the styloid process this is posterior border it is subcutaneous one can feel the posterior border of the ulna throughout and it provides attachment to the deep fascia with the deep fascia it receives insertion of three muscles namely flexor digitorum profundus flexor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi ulnaris now let's discuss about surfaces between anterior border and lateral border or interosseous border there is anterior surface and in upper part of the anterior surface there is a nutrient foramen you can see over here the direction is above so the lower end is growing end now upper 3/4 of the anterior surface provides origin to flexor digitorum profundus and in lower part it provides origin to pronator quadratus muscle the medial surface is observed between anterior border and posterior border and upper 3/4 of medial surface also provides attachment to flexor digitorum profundus so the flexor digitorum profundus has got extensive origin 
it takes origin from upper three fourth of anterior surface and medial surfaces, upper three fourth of from posterior border via deep fascia, as well as from medial surfaces of coronoid process and olecranon process. Now let's discuss about posterior surface of shaft of the ulna. It is situated between posterior border and lateral border. So this is the posterior surface. As you know above it is continuous with the lateral surface of olecranon process. This one. So this is lateral surface of olecranon which is continuous below as posterior surface of shaft of ulna. Now we can see over here there is an oblique ridge that reaches towards radial notch which is situated at the junction of upper one fourth and lower three fourth. This divides the entire posterior surface into upper and lower part. The lower part over here you can see which is further subdivided into lateral and medial part by a faint vertical ridge. Over here you can see. So this is entirely posterior surface which is divided into upper and lower part by an oblique ridge and the lower part is divided into lateral and medial part by a faint vertical ridge. The upper small area receives insertion of anconius and in the lower part the lateral area lateral to that ridge this portion provides origin to three muscles from above downward namely abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices. Now let's discuss lower end of the ulna. As you know it bears a head, circular head and a styloid process. The styloid process is situated posteromedial to the head. Now lateral aspect of the head is related to the ulnar notch of the radius. Over here this is lower end of the radius and into its medial part there is a notch. Over here you can see this is ulnar notch. So the lateral aspect of the head it is lodged in the ulnar notch and together they form inferior radial ulnar joint. The inferior surface of the head of the ulna it is related to an articular disc. The articular disc is attached medially at the junction of styloid process and head. Over here you can see there is a depressed area which provides attachment to articular disc and then it is related to the head of the ulna and finally it gets attached over here at the junction of inferior surface and ulnar notch over here. So below the head is related to the articular disc which is keeping the head of the ulna away from the formation of wrist joint. Remember head of ulna doesn't take part in formation of wrist joint. It is the articular disc and the inferior surface of the radius they form the superior articular surface of the wrist joint. Now if you see styloid process posterior to that between styloid process and head of the ulna there is a groove over here you can see and this groove lodges tendon of extensor carpi ulnaris. Now tip of the styloid process it provides attachment to medial collateral ligament of the wrist joint. So that is about general features and attachments on the ulna. Hope you understood well. Thanks for watching.